Hello lovelies, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am the Stylish Millennial and here we talk about personal style, how that relates to fashion because they're not the same thing. And this is for those of us that if you're not wanting to dress like you're 20 but you don't want to dress like you just got your AARP card and you're kind of navigating that awkward in-between phase, welcome. That's why I created this channel. And in today's video, I want to talk about the post-pandemic dress code for for us. If you work in an office or you're a consultant that works with um, different office crews, you're going to bump into this. I'm already starting to. And so I wanted to give my th some of the experts' thoughts, what they're thinking, some of my thoughts, and then I want to hear from you. And so the very uh, learned professionals, HR professionals, uh, company owners and such are kind of falling into one of two camps when it comes to this post-pandemic dress code. Let's face it, for the last 18 months, many office workers, if they're able to, have been working remotely, working from home and what have you. So it's been casual clothes, sometimes night clothes athleisure and they've still been able to be productive now that some places are opening back up and they're requiring their staff to come back in what does that look like dress wise are you returning to the pre-pandemic dress code are you allowing your staff to keep the casual look what's going on now, as I said, the, the two main camps that are kind of coming up in this discussion, you have some employers that are saying, you know, hey, if we're if we're a professional entity, your professionalism extends to your dress. And that's that's just what it is. That's something that's that's required because it's part of our image. So you've got some that see this return to a pre pandemic dress code standard as getting back to that sense of normalcy, that sense of stability that was previously had to say, we have, we've gotten past this hump, this, this thing that has just rocked our world for almost two years now, it's in the rear view. So we can go ahead and get our feet back up under us. And part of that is going to be returning to some of the things that we once considered the norm, which includes professional, professional dress codes. Many companies, even pre-pandemic, like seriously, since the early aughts, went towards a more business casual dress code anyway. Um, if you're, as I said, millennial, elder millennial here, I can remember one of my earliest jobs um, was it, the woman I worked for, she came in business separates and heels every day excuse me, when I was in high school, but by the time I had graduated university with my, with my first degree, that was, that was, that was kind of dated. You saw people still doing it, but it was those that were, you know, middle managers and such. So you already had a shift by the mid aughts, people moving towards business casual more often. So now that it's, like I said, everything was in upheaval, trying to get back to a sense of normalcy. Some are saying, no, our pre-dress code was professional or business casual. We're getting back to that in full force because we want to show that that's where we are. We're back to um, that previous standard. Some are saying, you know, we were, we were professional or we were already business casual and more emphasis on the casual than on the business. So we're going to continue to extend that and even add some more wiggle room for full on casual throughout the week, including athleisure, as long as it's like not too tight, not too revealing, no offensive logos, yada, 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 you know, the basic stuff to keep, keep everything um, squared up for HR purposes. And they're saying that because it's like, hey, if you're doing your job and doing your job well in these jogger sets that you've been wearing for the last year and a half, go for it. Some um, employers are saying, we want 
our employees to not be overly stressed or anxious and throw another concern on top of some of the already burgeoning anxiety of going back out after being sheltered in place for 18 months. So do what's comfortable for you. If that means, you know, we do alternating weeks schedules coming into the office and you keep it casual in jeans or you keep it casual in your jogger sets, we're not going to stress because we don't want you stressed. We want you chill and focused so you can be productive and, and keep everything from spinning out. I think that's very healthy, but I'm still curious if this is going to be a permanently adopted measure or they say, you know, this is what we're going to do in transition for the next six to 12 months until we feel like we're really solid. Okay, by the way, back to the business casual dress code. We, you know, this was just a, this was a break. This was kind of like those um, transition clothes when you're losing weight. Now that now that you're at your mate, the weight you want to maintain. Okay, now you're gonna have to let these leggings and pants with uh, elastic waistbands go. We're gonna have to get you some some real pants, girlfriend. It's gonna need zipper and buttons. Like I'm wondering if that's kind of what's gonna happen. Because my thought, my thought is this: at some point you're gonna have to address this dress code as you want it to stay. Nothing's permanent. Everything can be fluid. If you see, you know, yes, we talked to our employees and they said it really helped them get back in the mindset of everything is getting back to normal and I want to dress up more often. So we would like to go back to a not fully professional dress, but something a little more elevated dress code, business casual, more emphasis on the business. That needs to be talked out. If you have your staff say, no, we're still just as productive. And now we don't have to worry about buttons and zippers digging into our stomach after, after lunch. So we want to keep it, you know, with this casual thing, as long as it doesn't become a distraction or, you know, barring any HR issues. But I don't hear a lot of the learned people actually talking to their employees about it. And I think that's a problem because they're the ones that are living with this. If you say this is the image we present for our company, it's always been professional. We're not going to change that to business casual because that would alter the image that we present to the public. That's different. But if you're saying, yeah, we're just, we're trying to navigate this. Okay. Shouldn't you talk to the people that are doing the bulk of the navigating? I don't know. Get, get their two cents on it. Maybe. I think that'd be helpful. Here's something else that I thought about when I was reading some of these articles. And if you are, um, if you are returning to your office and thinking about maybe switching to another industry company, different office or whatever, I'd really like to hear your opinion on this because I'm, you know, it, especially for those entities where they're saying, no, we're getting back to business casual. Okay. Would that be a game changer for you staying at a company? If you can go to a different place that still has comparable pay and benefits, you're already doing what you know to do in whatever field, medical, finance, what have you but they have a dress code that fits better with your current mindset, would that be a game changer? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if that is also going to start coming up to the point where, you know how at one point it was like, oh, we offer, you know, on-site daycare, or we offer blah, 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 that seemed like an actual perk, if it's now going to be, and oh, by the way, person potential applicant that we want to work here we have a casual dress code we even allow athleisure sets like where it's going to be billed as a perk of the job and not just one of the norms that you kind of have to go over i'm very curious about this my personal take i've got a dual track 
because as a stylist, I know what we wear matters. It influences how we see ourselves, how others see us, and therefore how we move. I think business casual is a good idea for multiple reasons. One, it does get back to kind of that sense of normalcy that things aren't back to the way they used to be, nor should they be, because let's be honest, they were trash. But we're no longer in the just absolutely dead panic. The air is lava. We can't touch anything without Lysoling our, you know, dunking our head in bleach, but we're still taking precautions. We are fully informed in navigating this new world and we're doing it wholly, professionally, and courageously. I think that's going to be seen in business casual dress more than athleisure suits and jeans all the time. So I'm in favor of going back to a more business casual, but with a solid balance between business and casual. Not where it's super stuffy, where you're in suit separates all the freaking time. Elevated jeans, dark wash, you know, nice cuts, that kind of thing. That's that's where mind is going. My mind is going because I think that's also going to help you help us get back to, okay, I'm not just going through the motions to kind of do my work. I'm getting back to being active in my industry in my career. That's what I'm thinking. That's all I have. I really wanted to, I wanted to ask this question last week and then the week got away from me, but so that's what I have for you. Um, if you are returning to the office and your company has uh, laid down some edicts on the dress code, tell me what they are. Tell me if you agree or disagree. I just want to talk about it and see, like I said, see what, since employees are like doing this and they're living with what, what the upper echelon is saying. I think we should at least weigh in and give our two cents. Feel free. Tell me, are you back in the office? Do you agree or disagree with current dress code? What would you like to see? That's what I have for you this week. Um, I'll be back next week. Follow me on Instagram for more style content and random dog photos from when I volunteer at the animal shelters and go out and about. If you like this, check out some of my other videos. I'll create a playlist so they you can check them out at your leisure. And if you enjoy them, I hope you'll consider subscribing. And that's what I have. I will talk to you guys next week. Bye.